Tanya, for you, d d has evolved dramatically over the, since it, its evolution. Uh, I mean, since it was even created. What do you like most about the change? Like, especially in fifth edition. Um, so, funny story, Greg Tito had me on Dragon Talk, and we were talking about it, and he was like, oh, have you seen the new books? Because I had actually fallen off with 3.5. It was in a long-running campaign that ended. I kind of fell off, never got into next edition. And seeing the iconic human be a black woman, I was like, take all of my money. I'm coming back to D&D. And I was like, I need friends to play with. But then I found friends to play with. And it was just something that, it's always been a creative outlet for me. It's always been a way for me to write, to create. And you know, going from sitting in a game store, someone's basement, to a, a DM that want, would want us to read 50 page PDFs for every session, to I've got everything and I've got characters that finally look like me that are in the books, and I get to play with people that are not just my friends, but we're adventurers and we get to tell these great stories together. You know, and I'm very lucky that way, but you know, now that everything's evolved, we can play online. Because when I started playing, you couldn't play online, you had to find a table with friends. It's, it's just become much more of a storytelling place, but also a place to at least, I don't want to say collaborate too much, but hang out with friends while we while we weave a story. How important was you when you were jumping into 5th edition to have more inclusion? Like, because that inclusion is not only race, it's, it's inclusion for people of different genders, of different sexualities, and like, I feel like, Fifth edition D and D is like the most welcoming of them all that I've ever experienced. Actually, <laughs> for, uh, for me, it was vital. Uh, I mean, for no other reason that I mean, selfishly, I wanted to be able to see LGBT people like myself in the game, but also I wanted everyone else who felt like they had been overlooked in the past to be able to spot a glimmer of themselves. Uh, in our books. Uh, I mean, that's that's one of the reasons why uh, it, it's not just a kind of general thing. Like, we are, it's hard and fast that when we show heroes, we want to make sure it's at least a 50-50 split of uh, male presenting and female presenting heroes. Like, we take this very seriously, book after book after book, because we not only want people to have that experience of, hey, there's a hero kind of, I can imagine, like myself, but we also want to encourage people to be more creative about the kinds of characters they play and realize there's this amazing array of personalities and many other characteristics you can engage in in a role-playing game uh, and, and wanted to essentially open up that vast realm of possibility for people. Yeah, it's fantastic now. I, I, I love 5th edition and I think I have so many more friends now that are excited about Dungeons & Dragons because of the work that you've done. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jeremy and Tanya, for doing the interview from D&D Live. I know you have a whole bunch of other interviews to get to, and I'll talk to you later. Great All right, to talk to bye. You.